Hi folks, HR Funk back with you with a brand new video. I think I'm going to title this The Workhorse of Handguns. Reason being, I have with me today what I believe is quite possibly the most versatile handgun that you can purchase. It's capable of doing pretty much everything you can reasonably ask of a handgun with the exception of extreme long range and or big game hunting and extremely concealed or extreme concealment carry. Pretty much everything in between those two parameters this handgun can do. What do I have with me? I have a 4 inch Smith & Wesson Model 686 revolver chambered for the 357 Magnum cartridge. Now you may be asking yourself what is it about the 686 that I say makes it so versatile and so useful. To begin with it's chambered for the 357 Magnum cartridge. And that's actually precisely what this revolver was designed for from the ground up. It was built around the 357 Magnum cartridge and it was intended to be able to take a steady diet of full power 357 Magnum ammo. In fact, if you ever manage to wear out a 686 revolver, you have accomplished something because these are extremely durable revolvers made to last a lifetime. By virtue of the fact that it's chambered for the 357 Magnum cartridge, it can also chamber the 38 Special cartridge, and therein lies the true nature of its versatility. With this revolver, you can fire everything from extremely light loaded 38 Specials that you might use for target practice, might use for pest control, might use it for plinking, Virtually anything along those lines that you would want something very lightly loaded for. Also might use it to teach a new shooter the basics of uh, handgun marksmanship because they don't have to worry about a lot of recoil with it. So everything from that all the way up to the absolute most potent 357 Magnum ammunition this revolver will handle with ease. You can even fire shot shells through it if you uh, happen to buy 38 Special or 357 Magnum shot shells. So the chambering is the first thing that makes this revolver extremely versatile. When it comes to versatility, I think the 4-inch model of the 686 really gives you the best all-around compromise when it comes to barrel length. The 686 uh, currently also comes in a 2.5-inch version, it comes in a 6-inch version, uh, and it has been offered in the past in an 8 and 3 inch version. I don't know if it still is currently or not. But for all around general purpose shooting, the 4 inch I think gives you the best balance between sight radius, uh, ballistic performance, and easy carrying. Uh, you go much shorter than this, you're going to give up some of your ballistics, you're going to give up some of your sight radius, you go much longer and you're going to give up some of the carryability. So the 4 inch I really think is the best compromise. This is the do all package. Along with the chambering, and the uh, carryability of the 686, specifically the 4 inch 686, is the inherent simplicity that you get with all revolvers. With a revolver, a double action revolver, you basically have about four controls. You've got the cylinder latch, and you can see that my revolver is empty. To open it up and be able to load and unload the revolver, you've got the extractor rod to be able to extract cartridges, you have the trigger to be able to fire the revolver, and you have the hammer to be able to cock it if you're going to fire it in a single action mode. As with pretty much all standard double action revolvers, you can fire the 686 either in a double action mode with one long squeeze on the trigger, which both cocks and releases the hammer, or you can cock it and fire it in a single action mode, which requires only a short light squeeze on the trigger in order to fire the revolver. The 686 has come for several years with synthetic grips. These grips fit my hand very well. They allow for a good purchase on the firearm and good control while shooting. Also, it has Smith & Wesson's standard white outline rear sight and red ramp front sight. Let's see if I can get that a little bit better focus for you there. Try to get those sights in a little better focus. This is a traditional sighting system. It works very well. Uh, it's quick enough for defensive applications, but it still gives you enough precision for target shooting. And the stainless steel package 
or the stainless steel 686 is a very ma low maintenance package. You don't have to worry about rust or corrosion if the revolver is exposed to the elements. And there is really, with all the pluses that I've just outlined, there are very few negatives with this revolver. It is a little bit heavy if you're going to be carrying it. I didn't look it up specifically, but I, leave, I believe it's on the order of 40 ounces in weight. But in a good holster, on a good belt, you really don't notice that. I carry this revolver a lot of times when I'm out wandering through the woods and through fields. And as far as the weight's concerned, I don't even notice it. I carry it in a good waist, uh, waistband holster. And uh, it just makes a good carryable package. Again, that's one of the things I like about the 4-inch. If this was a 6-inch model, and I have a 6-inch 686 that I don't carry all that often, largely because it doesn't pack quite as well as the 4-inch model does. Again, when it comes to actually shooting the 686, it is about as simple as it can be. One of the things, especially on this particular model, with the Smith & Wesson action in general, and this one in particular, it is extremely smooth. The double action pull on this feels like it's been tuned by a gunsmith, and it has not. Uh, I've owned this revolver for many years, and it's just a very good factory action. Single action pull also, almost imperceptible movement as far as the trigger is concerned. Very light, very nice trigger on this revolver. So that's enough talking. Next stop is going to be the range. We'll do some shooting with the 686, and we'll see how it performs there. And just that fast, here we are at the range. I'm going to do a little bit of shooting with the 686. One thing I should have mentioned when I was doing my review, uh, I did mention the length of the barrel, but I did not mention the full underlug of the barrel. Both the heavy barrel profile and the underlug help to offset the recoil when you're firing full 357 Magnum cartridges in this revolver. Uh, to, again, help with that controllability, help with your follow-up shot speed, and generally make it a little bit more pleasant to shoot with full power 357s. What I'm going to do here in just a couple of minutes is do some shooting. I brought both some 38 Special Ammunition with me and some 357 Magnum ammunition. So I'll do some shooting with both just to show you that the accuracy really doesn't change any depending on the cartridge. Um, and I will also probably do a little bit of longer range shooting eventually to show you the capability of these fine revolver sights. And here we go, first up of the 38. Uh, I'm shooting these from a distance of 7 yards. I'll shoot them single action the first time through. Again, I'm just showing the accuracy potential of the revolver, and I'll do some double action shooting a little bit later on. And there's no difficulty there, keeping those first six shots right dead center in the target. Now we'll do the same exact exercise with some 357 Magnums. By the way, these are both the 158 grain variety. The 38 Special is a fairly warm 38 Special. It's not quite the load of plus P. The 357s are full power 357s that I'll be shooting through here next. I don't know if the difference in the recoil uh, was noticeable on the video uh, and the difference in the report from the revolver, but these are the 357 Magnums. I was aiming at the barrel of the revolver or the barrel of the pistol here. Didn't manage to put one down the barrel, but kept them in a fairly tight group right around there. Uh, I'm not shooting absolute precision on this. You could tell by the shot tempo that I'm just basically lining up the sights and squeezing off the shot. So next we'll do a little bit of double action shooting and see if that changes things at all. First up will be the 38 Specials and then the 357 Magnums. With those two drills, all I was doing was trying to stay inside of these ovals. 
with my shooting. These are the 38 specials. These are the 357s. Um, this is easily staying in the chest cavity uh, or chest cavity size uh, if you would be using the revolver in a defensive situation or if you would be using it even in a limited hunting application uh, that would probably be tight enough for medium sized game anyway. I think next do a couple of Mozambique drills the infamous two to the body and one to the head. First up will be the 38 specials then we'll repeat it with the 357s. And here we see the results from the Mozambique drill. Two shots to the body, one shot to the head. I actually had two bullets go through essentially the exact same hole up here. That was uh, one of my last, or that was actually my last shot. Went through the same hole as one of the previous shots. You can see that's just slightly larger than the other bullet holes. And there's no real difficulty controlling this. That synthetic grip on the 686 makes it very easy to shoot, even with the full power 357 Magnums. And the 38 Specials are just a joy to shoot. They are extremely pleasant. Okay, as promised, I've increased the distance a little bit. I'm back to about 20 yards now. Do a little bit of shooting back here. I've got three rounds of 38 Specials lo loaded into the revolver and three rounds of the 357 Magnum. I'm just going to go ahead and shoot out all six rounds. I'm going to aim at the lower abdomen of the target from back here. And again, we'll see what kind of accuracy you can expect. Uh, with these revolver sights. The, the revolver sights, sights are very good. They're almost a target sight on here. So I'm not expecting to have a great deal of difficulty keeping those shots on the target from this distance. And here are my shots in the lower abdomen. Uh, I managed to pull one shot slightly over to the left. Still didn't really have any trouble keeping it in that target or on that uh, human sized target. Other five shots are in a pretty nice group right there, even though they're scattered 38 specials and 357 magnums. Again, this is an extremely easy revolver to shoot. And again, even though you have a limited capacity in a defensive application, this revolver works very, very well. That's fun. So there you have it folks, that's my review of the Smith & Wesson Model 686 revolver. As I said at the outset, it is an extremely versatile firearm, a very durable firearm, very high quality revolver. Um, one of the nice things about shooting a revolver, and I'm reminded every time I do it, and this is, is the same for any double action revolver, not just the 686, but it definitely applies to the 686, is they are just a joy in their simplicity. There are no magazines to worry about, no safeties, no levers, no buttons, no switches, none of that stuff. Uh, no slide cycling. Uh, you just concentrate on your marksman, marksmanship, concentrate on your sight alignment, trigger squeeze, and keeping your shots right where you want them. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below. And until next time, good shooting. Bye-bye.